Beloved, June 7, 2019, in dreams, I saw how they were gathering from every corner American men for war. As I observed this, my companion said, come and see. I saw how large cannons were aimed at places where there were people and high and low buildings. I saw much destruction everywhere. I saw one person, a single one, lowering his hand. And at his signal, many cannons were firing. This man was dressed in white, and although he spoke of peace and the preservation of the environment in its most natural state, he gave the order for all these cannons to fire and destroy everything in their path. I saw how many young men and fathers of families were there forming the ranks of an army, which, unlike previous armies, I was led to know was peculiar and unique in all the history previously known. It was a battle against ideas and principles, against values and dignities. It was a battle, I was told, against justice and truth. This war, which was clothed in the appearance of monetary value and territorial wealth, its aim was to solidify human ideas under the oppressive banner of the beast, his image, and the false prophet. The destruction was such that there was no human way, no force, to restore what was destroyed. It was made known to me that this disaster would not be stopped by any human, unlike a ferocious beast, hungry, before its prey, it would be so. As I watched the desolation in great destruction, I saw how people ran to hide behind a wall in great fear. Their eyes reflected terror, and I heard them say, God help us. I could see what they were hiding from. It was a cannon ready to fire at them. The cement wall where they were hiding was strong, but not strong enough to stop the said shot. The cannon shot came out, and when it was about to hit, it did not hit with the expected force and only shook the wall a little. Then my eyes were opened, and I saw how an angel with his hand touched the wall that had been hit. He ordered us to get out of that place, and we went out. There was something in the air that made us feel sick just by breathing. We ran until we left the bitumen, tar, and cement behind us, and we entered a beautiful green field where we were ordered to pick and eat. I saw that there were tender legumes, like green beans. They were very soft and a little sweet, with plenty of fiber, and this sustained us, and we felt that the sickness was leaving us. I saw many young people and adults involved in that infernal war of religious relation. A craving for mind control was reverberating throughout the land. Then my companion said, procrastination was their downfall. Now, mortality is here among them. They formed the idea that it was long the time to realize their expectations. They played with the real time by the imagination of their expectations and did not put to think that their time was governed by celestial time. Their ears did not hear the warning voice and their desires got in the way for their own perdition and the perdition of others. Then, at that time, he said to me, Come and see. I went to see. I saw many big and small. And he said to me, Ask them, Are you Seventh-day Adventist Christians? So I asked them. And they all answered in the affirmative. Then, at that moment, I heard a very loud voice traversed the whole firmament that said, Depart from me, ye workers of wickedness. 
I said to those who made the affirmation, You have sinned against God. You are not God's people. Why did you not humble yourselves while there was time? And they answered, Be quiet, you crazy fanatic. We are God's people. And you are only speaking instigated by the enemy. You are an alarmist. That was just a loud thunder. And what are you saying? That a voice spoke? They scoffed and went on with their activities without seeing that their sentence had been cast. Said my companion, get away from them. I moved away. I heard a cry among them. I looked and saw how frightened they looked at each other because of the huge sores that were coming out all over their bodies. Beloved, that was terrible, that scene. Everything was now irrevocable. There was no longer any hope for them, and at that very moment, they knew it without mistake and without return. They wept bitterly. They pleaded, but their voice was not heard because they rejected counsel and their feet walked in iniquity. At this moment, beloved, there I woke up and heard the quote, Romans chapter 4, verse 8. May the Lord bless you.